Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, Sixers. It is time for another episode of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. This is episode 86, and tonight is the 21st of June, 2021. I'm Bill, and I'm joined, as always, by my percussive co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Welcome, guys. (laughs) Hello. Nice. That's not the direction I expected that one to go. Before we get started, we do want to remind you that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. That means if there's something in the Cosmere you haven't read and you're worried about hearing spoilers, you might want to go read those first, then come back, join in on the discussion. Because tonight, we are talking about the epigrams from Part 3 of Rhythm of War, which come from the eponymous Rhythm of War, the text written within the world of the Stormlight Archive. This is one For those of, of you who listen, episodes we're going to ever have. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube, we'd like to remind you that it's possible for our listeners to interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record episodes of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies every other Monday night, starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So please join us and take an active part in the discussion. The Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. Our show will, of course, continue to be free, but if you want to help us out, head on over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even pledging a buck or two per episode really helps us out as we continue to work to improve the show. Patrons do get immediate access to our Discord channel where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere with other listeners. It's a great community. We talk about a lot of different things. You also get early access to bonus episodes, exclusive access to other bonus content and other good stuff like warm, squishy feelings inside about helping us out. This week, we want to give a special thanks to our two new patrons, Neil V and Karen C. Thank you very much for your support. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome to the team. Woo! Welcome to the crew. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about Rhythm of War tonight, specifically Rhythm of War within Rhythm, Rhythm of, of War. War. <laughs> um, the text that was written by Raboniel and Navani as they sought after the elusive Rhythm of War. <laughs> that is the rhythm that would allow them to combine Stormlight and Voidlight into Warlight. All the lights. So, so many lights. So first off, I love the the format of this, where it's Rabonial, it, I believe it's Rabonial who's writing the actual text, and then Navani comes in and writes the undertext. I think they're both right. both writing some text, and I think they're both and others writing, are writing under text. Because I think it looks like with the writing under text for each other. With, with the okay. one on page five, it looks like it's um, Navani who writes the text, and the and Rabonio who's doing the under text. So I think yeah. yeah, it's they they're not always the same. That's right, because some of yeah, you're right, you're right. Well, so, the, but it, it's, this is sort of a unique thing because most uh, most of the times we've been taught when we've been told about the under text, it tends to be. You know, whoever was the actual woman who did the actual writing transcription, uh, yeah, yeah, did the un- undertext for uh, at least we learned at least with Navani in the case of them like dictating. You know, if it was a man that was doing it, uh, well, to the point where men own. didn't even know, <laughs> men didn't even know that undertexts existed. There was yeah, a yeah, Navani what? was quite embarrassed <laughs> to tell him like, uh, that's the comments we made behind your back, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's when we um, critiqued you, when we <laughs> called you an idiot. It's basically the same sort of thing that would come out in uh, Alamancer Jack. Yeah, I was going to say. As it was it, written it, by it, his, uh, yeah. his steward. It's, uh, what was his name? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, goodness. <sighs> Something weird, but anyway. I want to say. But yeah, just like he gets away with it just because he knows Jack ain't going to read it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what happened when they were transcribing for men as well. They yeah, knew they, they weren't going to read it. 
They can't read it. Oh, until it was, wasn't a manly yeah. art. <laughs> <laughs> but You're... this is really interesting. The whole relationship between Navani and Raboniel is fascinating. Um, it's just mm-hmm. really cool because you can tell they're not friends, no. but they have a deep respect for each other as scholars. Mm-hmm. They both are planning to betray the other when the time is right. And neither of them knows when that time is coming, but they know it's mm-hmm. coming. Mm-hmm. It, it's very, uh, but, uh, it's very, I know that you know that I know that you know, mm-hmm. but do you know that I know that I you know, know that I know that I know. But both of them tend to get lost in their research. You know, I mean, it becomes this frenzy. I think we've, we've mentioned it before. <clears throat> it reminds me of um, Shai's last yeah. days um, last as she's days crafting the, the Emperor's soul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where it's just this scholarly frenzy, almost this madness that comes upon them. I'm trying to have think. Have you guys of... seen, um, sorry, have you guys seen the movie Soul? Yes. Yeah, so like it's it's being what do they call it? like in the groove or in the in the zone or whatever like that. It kind of reminds uh-huh. me of that a little bit. Okay. Like where where the 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 captain is on the, the captain, street corner and, and he he's, kind he's of, doing he's spinning his yeah. sign and stuff and that he's in the he's in his zone or whatever and then right. he's doing that. But anyway, I'm trying so to think that of, focus that it's in flows. the Cosmere because we've had a couple of these works of madness because we've had this we've had the the diagram Emperor's Soul. Yeah, the diagram, diagram is one, yes. Yeah, and but I can't think of one where we've had sort of a collaborative effort. The way yeah. this was. I don't know. Where the two thing people is, are working together. Wait, wait, wait. With Wax and was it Marasi? And they were oh, figuring when something when doing out? Oh, the, when they're doing yes. the test, testing the different. So I was like, wait, there is that one. I'm pretty sure that yeah. it may not be quite as frantic, but there's but, but there was a collaborative effort there. Well, and it's 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 for them, it's a start of intimacy. And there's there's sort of a, a similar thing. It's, it's obviously a very different type of intimacy. Uh, yes, there's there's Nirvani's several kinds of taken. intimacy you can have. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But there there is something that happens between two people who are struggling with a problem together mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. it's it, you know, you it, it does form, you know, obviously with the charged word in this universe, a bond between the two people. Oh, and I was so, thinking a rhythm. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm reminded of cool runnings. Oh, anyway. Continue. So anyway, it's but it's really just fascinating seeing the way they play off each other. And one of them will be confused by something, but the way they say it will trigger something in the other. And it's just this this constant just, dialogue. It's it's the best sort of collaboration. I'm mm. sorry, I'm stuck on the <laughs> The cool running thing, and I'm just here. <laughs> feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme, feel the rhyme, hey, buddy. Get ready. It's shard light time. <laughs> nice. Uh, just shake children. your head, Bill. It's fine. <laughs> but it's just, it, like I said, it's the best sort of collaboration. And this is something, like we've said, Brandon writes a, a lot, and I think it's because it's something he's experienced multiple times. Because I feel like he has that sort of frenzy towards the end of some of his books. Because he's talked about how he experiences the avalanche the same way that we do. Well, we got to see that when he was uh, writing... When, when we what? were live streaming, live streaming Rhythm of War. That's, yeah, it was Rhythm of War. When, okay. he, when he was tweeting his, his sort of final... Yeah, we got to see the... We got to see just the fact that it is this frenzy. Well, and the other thing is, I bet there's a lot of because we we do know that he is uh, an insomniac, um, mm-hmm. and so he's a lot of times probably operating on very little sleep, and it's late at night, and so he's alone because no one else is awake. Mm-hmm. It's probably very similar to Navani's last days working on the Rhythm of War, mm-hmm. where it's mm-hmm. this very private thing, but very special thing. Right. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about, let, let's go to the text. So the first bit is from page one. She says, I find this format most comfortable as it is how I've collaborated in the past. I have never done it in this way and with this kind of partner. I approach this project with an equal mix, mixture of trepidation and hope, and I know not which should rule. Who is, can, can either of y'all tell who's writing the Copy with, and who's writing the undertext in this? With pro- with this one, I don't know. This, this one, one I, sure. oh, this one, I feel hundred percent. The first one's Navani. Okay. Uh, that makes yeah, I would think so too. And then mostly because of the second 
the like it's just Rabonia wasn't unsure to start this, whereas Navani was, and through this process, and, and Navani sort of self finally reaches her self actualized you know point. We're still dealing with Rabonia's, Navani with imposter syndrome here. Yeah, mm. and Rabonio's response is, "I approach this project with inspiration renewed. The answers are all that should matter." That is very much Rabonio's voice. Yeah, that does. She that is does in there like to her. just to learn. Everything else is unimportant. Navani, meanwhile, is hesitant to even be part of this at first. Well, well and then she's got good reason. She's working yeah. with her captors. Yeah, so. of course. Yeah, yeah, and that there's the power dynamic. Of course, Rabonio's like, "Oh, we should just all, all answers are all that matter." And it's like pretty easy to say when you're the one who controls the tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So page three, she says, in my fevered state, I worry I'm unable to focus on what is important. We just went into this. Like, it's just it's this frenzy. It's this Mm -hmm. fevered state is a way to is an interesting way of putting it, because have you ever had a fever dream? Where you're really, really sick and you fall asleep and nothing makes sense and you're only half as, half asleep and so you're kind of going in and out of dream state <clears throat> i remember a couple times when i was growing up where that would happen and it's just this sort of mental limbo <clears throat> but it's also like you're stuck and fixated on a specific spot you can't really escape from it and that's sort of how this feels to me. Like in my favorite fevered state, I'm, I worry I'm unable to focus on what's important just because you're fevered and you're yeah. not thinking clearly. Yeah. Well, and it's also I think there's kind of a double meaning there because mm-hmm. this one's obviously Navani again. Uh, I'm unable to focus on what is important in her situation at the time of writing. What is important is trying to save the tower. True. Yeah. And so. Rabonio responding, detachment is inevi- enviable. I think it's, I think she's, I think Rabonio's not realizing that Navani might mean something else in this. Uh, or if she does, she doesn't care to address it or yeah. doesn't feel the need to address it. Yeah, her, her full response is, when in such a state, detachment is enviable. I've learned that my greatest discoveries come when I abandon lesser connections. So stop worrying about all the people that you were responsible for and just focus on the work probably. Mm -hmm. That's what she's hoping to lean towards. You know, Rabonio is known for being ruthless and being Mm -hmm. scary. Oh yeah. Um, If you, if you remember when she shows up at the, um, at the listeners council meeting in uh, uh, what's it called? The Kolinar. Yeah. Yeah. Lesh, we, you know, cause Lesh, we's had this feeling of unease and the pursuer shows up and she's like, it's not him. No, no, and she shows up. And she's like, oh, no, <laughs> she was too radical and got thrown off of the out of the five. Five. Yeah. Nine. Nine. The yeah, number. The nine, yeah. Yeah. Out of the people who are stuck in the walls. Indeed. That's not creepy. The five is from something else, I think. Um, mm. And so. And this is why, because she's able to detach herself in this way, because she's like, the goal is all that matters. Yeah. Well, Everything and, else is just is disposable. Well, and because her goal is so, so different from a lot of the other fused where mm-hmm. her goal is not to end humanity. Her goal is to end the war. She's willing to take in whatever way possible. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. So she's willing to take risks. The other fused would never consider Right. Because because yeah. she knows well, because that giving give this discovery cuts both ways. She just thinks she'll be the one who when they when they make the discovery, they'll be the ones who actually get to use it. But mm-hmm. she knows there's a chance that only the other side could get to use it if things go wrong. But she's willing completely willing to risk it because to her, if the other side uses it, she still sort of she still gets out of this. Yeah, and that's and what she, she gets wants. her daughter out too, because mm-hmm. she has her daughter yeah. to worry about as well. Yeah, ending the war is the goal. Winning the war is a perk. Yeah, so it'd be a bonus. Yeah, a perk. Um, moving forward, this song, this tone, this rhythm sounds so familiar in ways I cannot explain or express. I love this, and this comes into play in mm-hmm. their discussions, because yeah. remember, Rabonio keeps saying, "You aren't." Of Roshar. Yeah. You know, she keeps talking about, you know, the humans were the, the invaders. 
Mm-hmm. And finally, Navani just comes back. She's like, you keep saying that, but I am from here. My, you know, my people have lived here for generations upon generations. We are of this world. And it kind of ties in with Odium's state right now. Yeah. Because Odium had no intention of being bound to Roshar. In fact, he kind of tried not to. But Mm -hmm. there's so much of him ingrained in it that he's now stuck here. Yeah. Um, In addition to the the binding that um, that Tanavast did, he is also tied to it the same way that other shards are tied to their worlds. You know, Mm -hmm. ruin and preservation were tied to Roshar. We don't know what's going on with um, with autonomy. You said Scadrill, actually. You said Roshar. I said, I meant Scadrill. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay. But I don't know what's going on with autonomy. Um, I think that Mm -hmm. autonomy herself is tied to Taldane, but she's created Mm -hmm. all these avatars that she's been able to send out. It would make sense if your name is autonomy to try and figure out a way that you can get around such things. She makes automatons, kind of. Yeah. Endowment yeah. is, you know, is tied to to Nalthus. Well, and that just, that was yeah. the big terror in Sk- in Skadriel was the fact that if Ruin could ruin Skadriel, he'd be free again. Right. Yeah. And that well, and then that also, was the scariest thing. Well, and so the other scary thing is suddenly Trowel is showing up. We know Trowel has something to do with shards, but we is a know. free agent in some manner. Mm-hmm. And so. It's the kind of thing that's kind of, you know, it's got say Z nervous. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, along the lines of talking about, because we've discussed this before, the the Navani talking about I'm of this world. It, mm-hmm. In a lot of ways, because for Raboniel, she sort of just exists in moments, you know, on this planet. And yeah. I think it's sort of like, uh, for those of us who have moved away from home, when you go back home after you know, being gone for an extended period of time, you always think of home as this static thing. Yes. And then you get there and, and there was, you know, it's like, whoa, that entire field is gone. Whoa, what happened to that building? Whoa, mm-hmm. where did all the blockbusters go? Or that might be something different. But um, <laughs> the uh, but you just go through it, and I think it's sort of like that for her, except it's on the scale of eons for, mm-hmm. yeah. for a being of her Much age. Much bigger changes. Yeah, and so they think well, of, particu- she still thinks of humans as the ones they first started fighting, the ones that, you know, that they took on this fused form, you know, in order to conquer. But humanity has learned a lot since then. Well, and not only that, she she thinks of humans because each time she comes back, it's the beginning of a desolation, and the desolations are when everything is destroyed and they lose all of their, you know civilization all of their early intelligence and so to her humans are and and particularly as they happen closer and closer together humans are this primitive group and Mm -hmm. now humans have had thousands of years to grow and develop and thrive she comes back and they're learning things that the listeners never knew and the singers never knew and all because and Tanavas so, just took it like an absolute dude. Oh man, Poor for oh, Tanavas is seriously. I am Oof. so interested in learning more about this guy. But we're not getting his backstory until Long the back time. half. Long time. So. Um. Anyway, Rabonio's response. She says, "I am led to wonder from experiences such as this if we have been wrong." We call humans alien to Roshar, yet they have lived here for thousands of years now. Perhaps it is time to acknowledge there are no aliens or interlopers, only cousins. This is a really cool statement from Raboniel. Partly because, and this is one of the reasons that Raboniel is an interesting character, because she's willing to change her mind. Yep. So she, often. She, she puts, she actually treats Navani sort of like a, an equal compared she, to the she lot does of the treat other, her like a peer. Yeah, whereas Which, the other fused don't even consider. She doing treats that. her better than Navani does. Navani keeps saying, "I'm no scholar. I'm no scholar." And Rabonio mm-hmm. comes in. She says, "Look at you. Look at what you're doing. You're a scholar. <laughs> You've been one. You're doing it right here." Yeah. Well, it's what makes her so dangerous. Is she? She is mentally flexible, and she's actually quite humble, which is 
interesting for someone who's so wise. Mm -hmm. She's humble enough to know when she is when, like when she's been proven wrong on something and she's willing to admit it. You think of so many of the other uh, villains in the Cosmere. So many of them are undone just because they're so inflexible. Straff mm -hmm. almost you know, Straff lost partially because he just couldn't see Ellen for anything more than the the idiot boy child that he grew yep. up as. Yeah, you, you mm -hmm. look at uh uh oh my goodness, I'm blanking on his Sadius. name. Sad yeah, Sadius, who he he died because he kept wanting to play the <laughs> the courtly games. And mm -hmm. it just you know, it was no longer time for that and finally it caused Adolin to snap. He, Even on he, the heroic side, that was sort of the downfall of uh Vivina is yeah. when she just went in when she had her mind absolutely set and that's when she you know the world came and said no and slapped her around for a bit and yep. she had to, suddenly had to learn oh oh things are different than i realized i need to change <laughs> my perspective yeah i have to think about things a lot differently mm -hmm. and so yeah. I, again that's one of the reasons i love raboniel just yep. because she's willing to change her perspective and she has an interesting one as it is yeah, well, and it's just I can't think of another villainous example so far in the Cosmere who's been so willing to change their mind. The only one I other can think of is Tara Vangian, who the further away they got from the diagrams creation, he started seeing it as we shouldn't be trusting this as much as we have because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's just it's getting too unreliable. I mean, yeah, we've, to we've stepped too far plans. away from it. The yeah. unwillingness to change. That was the whole character build of the Lord Ruler. Yeah. To the yeah. point where he, st I mean, he actually used it intentionally. He stagnated the world and wouldn't let them change in order to mm -hmm. keep them from growing and, and bringing him down. Yeah, because um, he had to stop so, ruling. So, so he kind of mm -hmm. weaponized it. You know, because he realized change is important and he said, OK, change is important. Development makes you stronger. So we will not let you anything change. And he just halted all scientific advancement. Yeah. And so, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's part of what makes her so cool. I love humble villains. Mm hmm. There's just Absolutely. Some, there's something they're, they're fun, scarier. fun about. Well, she, she's so polite about everything. She's not mean. I know. It's 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 one of these things. It's like she, she she's treating Navani right and being like, no, and no, no, come on, no. you can do it. And it's just like, what is happening here? I don't well, know how to take this. At well, all. That's the other thing, particularly when you compare it to Gavilar's treatment of her in the prologue. Oh yeah. Because you know Gavilar is like, you're nothing. You're a pretender. Mm -hmm. You play you at these games. You're you know you're a child, but. You're not adding any benefit. You're not worth it. And Raboni is saying, give us more. Give me more. You're offering so much. And well, the, it's, it just, it makes you confused because you're like, but she's the villain. I'm not supposed to like her. Well, so even Yesna, who's, who sees Navani in a very positive, glowing, you know, terms, mm -hmm. she doesn't want to work with her mother on a project. There's, there's no. too much. You she know. sees her glowing mother not a glowing scholar she mm -hmm. says my mother is an amazing mother she's an you know she's a wonderful caregiver and completely and, she's, well, and she recognizes her strengths as a diplomat as a team leader mm -hmm. like she because th there's a reason yesna isn't the one leading the scholarly team it's it's navani mm -hmm. Yesna's sort of just doing her own thing to the side well and part of it, that is because yesna's scholarship is the softer science you know political science and logic and um and philosophy navani's is like practical you know practicality where yeah. she leans in she's like okay a equals you know b and b equals c so a equals, you know she's doing all of the she's engineering the, ex yeah. exactly it's more of an engineering well, mathematical she, she, this is actually more like and i don't say this because i love the subject physics like she's mm -hmm. trying to understand the basic fundamental building of blocks light. of their universe yeah. And now in good and this is where I'm going to get a little nerdy at the second. Good experimental design is the hard part cuz you got to figure out how to how to measure stuff. Theoreticians came up with you know like Einstein came up with a theory of relativity like a good 20 years before they ever were able to to test it because it was so far ahead. 
um, then the uh, in something like the irrational number, you know, I, the square root of negative one, it was, I want to say it was like 200 years before we found, you know, a physical, you know, analog to it, to where it's like, okay, this is what this number actually explains. Right. And so the theory is always far ahead of the experimentalist. Navani's an amazing experimental physicist. She mm -hmm. figured out how to design the experiment to test the theories, did test the theories, and then on the engineering side, figured out how to freaking <laughs> weaponize it. Like, yep. She, yep. She's a one-man <laughs> science team. Yeah. And she did it with one hand. Well, Type because essentially she's been working with weights this entire time. Mm -hmm. And R Rabonio shows up and says, drop the weights. Let's do this. And yeah. Navani said, okay. <laughs> it's it's also with going back to the Yas yeah, not really not really working with Navani too much. It's also kind of a different dynamic working with your parents versus you know and and Yas is old enough and well, smart and, enough and worldly and yes, enough too. Enough. <laughs> yeah, and Yasna enough that that she can recognize that yes, adults have different capabilities and other things, and she's an adult now. So that they're past that stage of. She's just her mom, but she's also all these other things. But it's still, I, I wonder if there's still like an element of she still has that feeling about it and just knowing that, and there's always that weird dynamic you just often between like parents and kids. Right. Of, you know, who's, in, who's really in charge of it and, and everything else and like all that stuff. And I mean, I'm kind of in the weird stage of I have kids as well as my parents are still around. And so sometimes I find myself in a weird position when i have mm -hmm. my parents there and my kids there and i'm like wait am, do i let am them i the tell kid my or kid? the parent yeah and so it's like do I let my kids listen to my parents or listen to me or what or and it's always just a weird balancing act that way and so like, i can only imagine what it's like when your mom is the queen and and your yes and yes so. is yes <laughs> yeah. so, so yeah, it's, 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 it's just not like yes has ever proven to be good at dealing with uh with teams of people it seems the only people yeah. she's able to work with are her uh her instant messenger partners over the span yeah. reads and that's because well, they just sort yeah. of collaborate they're or, or, mm -hmm. uh, correspond it's not like they're a full-on research team well, she's got yeah. such a strong personality and just a forcefulness to her that most people just sort of roll over in her, in her path. The yeah. people she's able to work with are the ones who refuse to do that, but those people are few and far between. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the only, okay, person, so this, the only person we've seen really stand up to her was Kaladin. Yeah, Amaram tried, but he did not come out of that well. No, in the it end. did not work. And well. in fact, no. Yes, the smacked him down so hard that she made Shalad <laughs> start giggling. Well, and then uh, Ruthar tried to do it in this book, and she stabs him through the throat. So. Yeah, yes. Don't, don't um, push Yasna. This next uh, interchange, I, or inter, yeah, is really interesting to me. It. She comes in. She says. It would have been so easy if Void Light and Storm Life destroyed one another. Such a simple answer. I think and this I, one's Rabonial, right? This time? I don't in. know, but I, but I love the response where it's, we must not let our desires for a specific result cloud our perceptions. But how can we not, in searching, wish for a specific result? What scientist goes into a project without a hope for what they'll find? I find this experience so odd. I work with a scholar from the ancient days before modern scientific theory was developed. I keep forgetting all the thousands of years of tradition you completely missed. So yeah, that was yeah. Navani. Who, yeah, who it was wrote that yeah. Navani who, who did the undertext, yeah. But I love this thought process. You know, it's the confirmation bias. Is mm -hmm. essentially, you know, we don't want this when we're researching because suddenly we ignore the, the right answer if it shows up because it's not the answer we expected. Yeah, we're tainting the, you know, the, the experiment by looking for this thing instead of being open to what the results actually are. Mm -hmm. Well, and it, on the experimental design side, the biggest issue tends to be because you think you already know the answer, you, you accidentally set up an experiment that can only confirm your, your suspicions. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Which is why here it's, it's, it's really neat because... 
Raboniel has been hoping for the easy answer, the quick solution, mm-hmm. because she is so tired. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and so Navani, though, kind of freshly renewed by a good project and something to take her mind off. Like, if I remember correctly, at this part of the chapter, uh, the, like she's sort of stuck just sort of waiting for something to happen. Mm-hmm. And so I think the, the scholarship at this point is a very welcome distraction. Well, and she's also um, a fresh set of eyes on something that Rabonio has been considering for eons at this point. Mm-hmm. And so it's just a completely different perspective. You know, Rabonio has been thinking of it from the eyes of a singer from ancient times. Uh, you know, she says, I, uh, Navani says, I work with a scholar from the ancient days before modern scientific theory was developed. I keep forgetting all the thousands of years of tradition you completely missed. This also makes me think, you know, there are scientists um, and engineers from time long past. Leonardo, uh, Leonardo da Vinci being the one, one that immediately comes to mind. Um, if he had had the history and the science that we've based upon his work, what could he have done? If he had had yeah. the culture we have, of course, would he have even gotten into science? But it's just sort of a, we build upon that which comes before us. And so it's easy to take it for granted after a while because it just seems, oh, this is how it is. Well, mm-hmm. in, in Da Vinci, uh, to, to use your example, he had to keep a lot of his stuff secret. Um, mm-hmm. He didn't really have anyone to collaborate with. And so, you know, he everything he did was sort of on his own. I get the impression Raboniel's very similar She's mm-hmm. had to she's had to hide some of her plans because they're too risky and other singers wouldn't approve. And frankly, looking at the the fused, uh, we haven't really seen anyone that's anywhere close to her intellectual level. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I forget the name of what her kind of fused are called. We haven't seen another one. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. you wonder if she's a pretty rare breed and if they're all as headstrong as her, they might not be good at collaboration. But this right. is a person who she has under her power, so she can actually be more honest and open. And, and ironically, even though she's an enemy, collaborate better than she can amongst her own kind. Right. Um, yeah, one of my favorite sayings is creativity thrives within bounds. And talking about Da Vinci, talking about what O'Neill's doing, that also is something that could have driven some of their discoveries is the fact that they had to do it in secret so they had to do it within a certain way and they came across things that they wouldn't have if they had been everything had just been open and said okay study whatever you want well no i have to study this in this way and it just it's almost like uh an explosion inside of a funnel it you know is for it goes straight out the direction where there isn't any boundary but the but the bounds i mean like a gunshot you know, the barrel keeps it all contained and, you know, just in- enhances the force rather than just sort of flying off in whatever direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a fire can, you know, a fire can either burn everything down or it can power an engine. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so the because they had to do these studies in secret and were looking for something in particular and they were confined they had to be creative in order to achieve what they wanted Uh, a lot of people talk about that's one of the reasons that the original star wars movies went so well is because the first movie lucas was working on it a shoestring budget yeah and ended up creating one of the most popular franchises of all time um and and so i just i like the way that navani talks about this she's like i i forgot that you don't have all of this tradition that's been built upon study. You know, there are things that have grown. And so your brilliant mind, it's not that you don't understand things. It's that you just haven't learned this aspect that we're taking for granted. Mm. It's a so. common thing in sports debates of who's better. Uh, the modern athlete is so much bigger than previous athletes. And so there's always a question of, Okay, but assuming, you know, the previous athletes had access to the same training methods, the same dietary knowledge, you know, and all this stuff, how how well could they have done relative to the modern one? 
Right. And it's just, if I see far, it's only because I stand on the sh- sh- shoulders of giants type of thing. Yeah. And I mean, you, you this is kind of a slight off topic, but I mean, even with women who now don't have to worry about taking all day to do laundry and so, and have more ways to get children taken care of or don't always have kids as early, all these other factors, women can do more things you know, hobby wise or work wise or career wise or whatever else, just because they don't have as many responsibilities holding them back. Yeah. I know it's for, a weird connection that I'm making there. Well, but no, for, that, free, it just came free to mind that it's incredible. Like, it, oh, yeah. There's a reason, like, all the early scientific developments were done by nobles. It's because mm-hmm. the peasant class can't, they can't afford time to go and figure out science they they have to plow the they field. have to eat <laughs> and so it's, it's only to, the noblemen yeah. who have some free time who can afford to start doing some experiments and mm-hmm. that's that's the big gift of nowadays it's like we we look at this i mean look at what we're doing right now a podcast yeah where mm-hmm. you know we we can only do this because technology has gotten to a point where we can communicate you know instantaneously virtually over Oh, you know, we're basically tricking rocks into thinking for us and speaking for us because <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, that's all silicon is. It's just it's just rocks. Yeah. And yeah. because of that, we're able to explore so many new different options. And it's it's why there's sort of this exponential boom in knowledge. The more we open up uh, any sort of of communication between people is we're more interconnected. There's so much more collaboration people Mm -hmm. who would have had no chance to collaborate in the past like even something as stupid as like culinary advances look at something like iron Mm -hmm. chef we would have never known about the cuisine of you know japan and them you know fusing with the cuisine over here if it weren't Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. modern technology and communications and getting Uh, to actually um, cross oceans another example to bring it back to the cosmere is you know, in, uh, I don't remember if it was, I think it was in Words of Radiance, the code from the diagram, the diagram, or was it an Oathbringer? It, but it was the, you know, there was a code in one of the epigrams. Yes, the zero, zero, epigraphs. one, zero. Oh, it was yeah. like the zero, all, the, all these <laughs> the different numbers. I, just, I looked at it and said, I'm not even going to try. I don't know. I mean, I guess. if you listen one to the of, audio book, it just takes One of the most unintentionally <laughs> hilarious audiobook <laughs> sections ever. As he just, but, he does this long streak, pause, and oh, wow, that was long. Two, nine, three. Oh, dear. It's going again. <laughs> but the gone. thing about it is that code was solved by Brandon's fans. Collaboration. Because yeah. they co- collaborated over forums and stuff, and they were talking about different ways to turn it. And they figured it out shockingly quickly. Brandon was a little bit, not not upset, but just kind of blown away that they solved it so quickly. And he's just like... Well, (laughs) Well, you know, he probably was like going through a bunch of different ciphers, really planning this, like really excited Uh for it. Like, I can't wait to see them try and solve this. And then it's just like, it's like that (laughs) annoying kid who can solve a Rubik's Cube in under 10 seconds. And you're just, it did take some time, (laughs) but it still happened really quickly because Mm -hmm. again, they're collaborating with each other and it's just a different level of computation when Mm -hmm. you're, it's like, I would say you have these networked minds, not literally, but still metaphorically, they're they're networked together and working together and powering each other and inspiring. Each, it's, it's really, really a cool concept. Mm-hmm. And okay. Especially these two who come from such different backgrounds and approaches. But they're both yeah. they're both willing to cooperate on this thing. Yeah. Each for again, hoping for a different outcome. Each of them do you know working towards different goals but they're still both wholeheartedly willing to look at it and willing to disconnect from preconceived uh, notions yeah so, so mo- um i looked up what rabonia was and she's a fana im ones fana of alteration that's right because she can so, trans she's she can uh yeah transformation she's soul a cast. soul caster type yeah turn weapons into dust and be able to breathe out an apparently toxic compound so hmm. But it doesn't mention if there's others. <laughs> yeah. Um, so moving forward, this point regarding the rhythm of war's emotional influence will be of particular interest to Al. This is a juicy comment. Mm-hmm. And then Navani's response 
And, this, and is this is where it really feels like, you know, a footnote that somebody else reading is writing. It's like, who is this person? You use no title, so I assume they're not a fused. Who then is L? Well, it's because it makes perfect sense. Because, again, every, yeah, she always uses titles. And she's sitting here thinking, you don't, what? Who would you know? You don't know anyone. <laughs> 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 Everyone you know is a fused. <laughs> Why but do you know plus, someone who's not a fused? If I remember right, this is the first time we hear the name L, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I Very think so. first time. Because yeah. we don't hear it, and we don't hear it again until musings of L. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when um, when the defeated one shows up. Yeah. yeah. But the other thing is it made... This is something with me, and this may have been just a pure sidetrack Brandon thing. Um, but... It made me look closer at Raboniel's name because it ends in L. But before that is Raboni, which I, Brandon has said that some of the language and stuff in the, in the names of the unmade are taken from Hebrew lore. Mm-hmm. And yeah. in Hebrew, Raboni means master or teacher, oh, which really like does Rabbi. apply to Raboniel. Mm-hmm. And and I think that's also sort of a part of the way um, certain names work for certain characters is subconsciously a lot of people do have, okay, Rabona, I know that term. I've heard it somewhere. I don't know what it means, but I remember it has something to do with teaching. All of this subconscious, not an, not an act of thought. And, it, and so it just sort of helps to draw Raboniel's character. And then, of course, L is... Um, the, the Hebrew God. Mm, and, yeah. and so all of it, it just immediately comes with a feeling of power. You know, you hear L and you just think, okay, this is a name to pay attention to. And then Navani calls attention to the name and you pay even closer attention. I think this is right here. What Brandon has done is absolutely masterful. Well, and there's also and maybe, a, <laughs> no, no, no. But diving into the name thing, the other thing is I think subconsciously, um, if you're familiar with, you know, any of these works, which thanks to Supernatural, I think a lot of people are more familiar with it than they should be. Um, <laughs> the angels' names, the names yes. that yeah. end in E-L tend to be angelic. Gabriel, mm-hmm. Michael, uh, yeah. and you start going th- Raphael. Because they're, again, referencing. Yeah, and so her name invokes with- the idea of an angel, but... <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. And so, if, again, just with the, the great uh, just dichotomy that is Raboniel's character, that there's just, an, there's just another one just by similarly putting the name. But I would really love if your, if your translation, Bill, was correct, and what she is is the teacher of L. if L's like her prize student. It would add a fun, interesting cool. layer to who L or, is. Or vice versa. Yeah. She is the teacher who was sent out by L. Mm. Either one could work. Yeah, it, it would one, add you know, a lot other. of very int- very interesting ideas to to who L is. Hmm. And so I kind of want it to be a literal thing that Brandon did, and he was <laughs> pleased with himself and giggled, and then kept writing. Mm-hmm. I want to know if he ever giggles when he writes. If he's just like, oh, probably. Oh, I'm so proud of this. Ah. Uh. Okay, in other circumstances, I would be fa- be fascinated by this sand to the point of abandoning all other rational pursuits. What is it? Where did it come from? We know what it is. We know where it came from. <laughs> well, the funny yep. part is, because Raboniel then explains, we got a much better explanation of the sand than we ever did in the... Co- the- <laughs> The, sa- the uh, white oh my, sand books. You know, the white right. sands books. Like so, oh. our best explanation of the sands is from the wrong universe <laughs> of books. Our best in-world explanation of the sands. Yeah, Brandon has said a lot of this. Yeah. Um, and just to remind people, what he, what they say is, I am told that it is not the sand itself, but something that grows upon it that exhibits the strange properties. One can make more with proper materials and a seed of the original. Brandon's told us that there's a lichen that grows on the on the sand and it's a, it's sensitive to um investiture which radiates from Taldane's sun mm-hmm. the sand originated off world 
It is only one of such amazing wonders that come from other lands. I have recently obtained a chain from the lands of the dead, said to be able to anchor a person through cognitive anomalies. I fail to see what use it could be to me as I am unable to leave the Risharan system, but it is a priceless object nonetheless. Is this the same chain that um, I'm assuming they saw in the, in the port? City yeah. in. I'm assuming I it is, it but is. I can't remember where it's from. Do it we was, don't know. Do we know we, where it's we from? Don't, we don't know what it's from. Uh, but we saw we saw it in the 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 cognitive bazaar. Adolin saw it. Yeah. And he he saw the price for it, and he's just like, "Whoa, what, what? is this?" Yeah. And it, so the fact that it says it uh, it can anchor a person through co- cognitive anomalies. There's part of me that wonders is if a chain like this is sort of how people might be able to get through the uh, the uh, Selish systems, mm-hmm. cognitive realm, since mm-hmm. we know it's a possible. it's a storm. And that's so, very possible. So when I think of anchoring through an anomaly, that's my first thought. The other yeah. thing is um, in one of the star charts. I can't remember which one it is. It's either it's either uh, Nalthus or Roshar. I think it's Nalthus there's actually a thing that shows up that is labeled cognitive anomaly. Oh, I can't remember I which remember. star chart it's on. I, th- I want to say it's now this you'd, uh, you'd want to look it up on, if you want to look it up on the copper mind, um, because it, it, it labels the planet. And then there's a little area off to the side that's labeled cognitive anomaly. So. is so zoomed out um calvin rtvp and chat makes another yep, it's in- it's a nalthus yeah um calvin rtvp and chat makes another tie back to l he says cal l and jor l which again a feeling and a sense of power mm-hmm. and something authority. to be taken seriously yeah, and authority yeah and then uh B- beast amir says saying land of the dead makes me think it's from threnody which is an Which interesting. Which I can definitely see, yeah. Well, because my first thought was the cognitive realm is land of the dead. Yeah, that was that was my thought of of land of the dead as well. But just that, but that was because of how the fused are cognitive shadows themselves. But right. a literal land of the dead that actually makes a lot of sense. It could be from Thren, that it could be Threnodite, uh, I guess Silver technology or something. Or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, I mean, I ha- I can't discount either of them. Both of them make sense to me. So. Yeah. Yeah, but this this section is just so much co- Cosmere stuff. Just well, and it just it, it is. I love uh, Navani's. Just you know, in other circumstances, I would be fascinated by the sand to the point of abandoning all rational pursuits. Because it is. It's just like whoa, whoa, whoa. The sand is what? reacting to 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 this stuff. What on earth? It should mm-hmm. not do that. Sand shouldn't do that. Yeah. And just... it's like no, you're right. Uh, it's cheating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. As we dig further into this project, I am left questioning the very nature of God. How can a God exist in all things yet have a substance that can be destroyed? And then the response, I'm not convinced any of the gods can be destroyed. So perhaps I misspoke. They can change state, however, like a spren or like the various lights. This is what we seek. So the first one is Navani and the second one is Raboniel, correct? Well, like clearly, because so. Navani's using singular God and uh, Raboniel's using plural. Yeah. Not only singular, but also caps. Like yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. Which it's is what they were they refer to honor as. Yeah, it's the Almighty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Almighty. Um, when it's Raboniel knows there's other shards, mm-hmm. and Navani conceptually does know this, but her her religious leanings still hold uh the almighty as well the almighty um yeah and um it's a very Raboniel, complicated relationship yeah. <laughs> raboniel is much more cosmere aware so she realizes that you know her her view isn't limited to roshar alone yeah well and it's also this line i am not convinced any of the gods can be just destroyed so i perhaps i misspoke they can change state however like spren or like the various lights this is what we seek we do see a changing of the of the go- of the gods of odium yeah of odium a changing know, of the guard we know that uh she she collaborates with l who also was wanting a change cuz he says you yeah. are the one i've been seeking to worship i wonder if this is the unstated plan she really had to get rid of 
oh, race so that huh. they they could be released from this. Who knows? Yeah. It, we, we, yeah, we'll never know from her. She you... ain't saying anything. But Yeah, I mean, and if that is the case, I'm wondering what else she was doing to help facilitate that other than just making the war light. Yeah. Because that doesn't lead directly to it. It doesn't. But well, no, she it, she was try, she wasn't only trying to create war light. She was trying to create anti stormlight. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because yeah. they want to kill the spren because cause as long as the, the can, high spren exists, they just make more bonds and they can't get any headway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's the problem yeah, with the she, fused on the other side. They just keep being reborn. Yeah, she was hoping yep. that war light would essentially work as a an anti stormlight. Mm. Or the ability to create, rather than creating war light, it would destroy stormlight. I think. Yeah. The... yeah. Well, the the other thing, and this is one of those again, we have no proof of it, because she was interested in war light specifically. Mm-hmm. I wonder if, on some level, she looks at the the sibling, who is a being of life light and uh, stormlight. Excuse me, and stormlight. And tower light and wanted to know if there's something equivalent, because Mm -hmm. if there's something equivalent, I wonder if there's a part of her, much like how she was going to corrupt the spren of the of the sibling and make her unmade. I'm wondering if she was trying to find a way to undo that process as well, to maybe remake something. It almost hmm. seems like, um, because when when Warlight is discovered, she's almost shocked. Like she she's you know because if Warlight can exist, then all of her preconceptions have to shift around this concept, because mm-hmm. it's essentially the concept of can humans and singers coexist? Yeah, if the two War- lights can. Then if the two lights can combine into something, then this coexistence is not a you know, it's not unnatural. Mm. It's not impossible. This is actually something that can exist. You have to yeah. work it right to make it happen, but it can exist in a harmony. Well, and if you go back again, if she's conversing with L, L's all on board for the harmony. He, he's mm-hmm. he's cool with that. Mm-hmm. And he's, of course, he wants certain groups on, in charge of other groups, but, you know, a yeah. harmony in its own way. Yeah. It's interesting. It's just, he he talks about wanting to rule the humans, not necessarily just like he wants to rule them because he's fascinated by them. But as you said, he wants to rule them, and so yeah, it's an yeah. interesting dichotomy. We're not dichotomy, but situation. Yeah. Hmm. Well, no. Who who wants if if you're gonna you you want to be the one in charge? Clearly. <laughs> uh, it's much like the cones of dungeon. Dunshire. Everyone wants to be the uh, the ledgerman. Now, this is where the dialogue breaks off in the next section. On page 27, it says, Do not mourn for what has happened. This notebook was a dream we shared, which is itself a beautiful thing. Proof of the truth of my intent, even if the project was ultimately doomed. I leave you now to your own company. So that's Rabonio, right? That is definitely Rabonio. Oh, yeah. Because this is Rabonio after she has, you know, said you, you really shouldn't be so, so trusting. So trusting. Yeah, because mm. she just proved they made the anti void light. She used it to kill her daughter and then said, yeah, so now I'm using this to make anti storm light. OK, thanks. Bye. Yeah. Going to go kill the spren. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And, and no. leaves Navani just absolutely just hurt. Dist- sucker punched. Oh, yeah. And And it's just, it's an interesting um, sentiment because Rabonio, you can tell she really regrets that in her mind, at least in her mind, this is the way things have to be. It's Mm -hmm. like, you know, it's a, you know, the notebook was a dream we shared, which is itself a beautiful thing. Even, you know, even if the project was ultimately doomed. And so it's like she was genuine in her desires, but she had ulterior motives at the same time. And those yeah. overrode her own personal desires. Well, mm-hmm. and it's, it's worth noting that she uses the word this proof of my intent because uh, she told Navani, I want an end of the war one way or the other. And Navani mm-hmm. sort of brushed that off as, OK, yeah, clearly you'd say that yeah, right. now. Yeah. Right. And 
this is her on you know like no now you know what i said is true because i gave mm-hmm. you the same weapon that i that you now have given me right and you know that i was not lying to you on on this and so it's it's what i think makes it all the more tragic is navani mm-hmm. finds out this woman was telling the truth the entire time like the i can't think of a real lie that raboniel told her she just didn't tell her everything yeah right. but she never lied to navani no and that again makes a very very interesting villain to me because for mm-hmm. them to be able to do this without just straight up lying it it's the same concept that uh shy had was you know being truly genuine was the way to gain gain his trust and mm-hmm. she was genuine yeah Th- the fact that she wrote this message i think is absolutely just again it shows the complexity of her character because mm-hmm. she could have just said you know sorry you lose i'm out of here but she had to write this thanks note. nerd <laughs> You know, but but again, she she had to stay and write this. You know, she's, mm-hmm. she's like, because th- this share shows she cares not only about Navani's feelings, but of Navani's opinion of her. Mm. You know, she's like, don't mourn for what's happened. This notebook was a dream we shared, and that's a beautiful thing. It's like proof of the truth of my intent. She wants to make sure Navani knew she was genuine in what she saw. Yeah. That didn't have to matter to her. Yeah. But because it did, suddenly Raboniel is a much deeper, more interesting character. Well, it's just whenever you have a villain that's just pure evil, like we don't, no one admires Straff. No one admires Sadius. Um, it's because they're not men of, of virtue of any kind. They're, they're, they're purely self-serving. Um, yeah. and, and while you can have some level of excellence in someone who's purely self-serving, cause there, there's a lot mm-hmm. of self mastery that goes along with that. It's much more interesting when a villain has some j- j- absolute real virtue to them. And Raboniel is honest. Raboniel is someone who, who, who unites instead of divides. Uh, mm-hmm. Raboniel is someone who absolutely seeks to improve things wherever she goes Wait, you know, these are real, true virtues. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, her boss is Odium. Yeah. So it's a problem. Absolutely. And then we get to the final page of Rhythm of War. And you can tell and this is Navani, right? Oh, yeah. I would it, guess so. It's you all Navani t- because, the rest because, of the way. Yeah, because Raboniel has left. the, And so Navani is the one who has the book now. But you can tell. Her, her her language is very frenzied, very stream of thought, stream of consciousness, thoughts bouncing back and forth. Mm-hmm. Opposites, opposites of sound. Sound has no opposite. It's merely overlap vibration. The same sound, but sound has meaning. This sound does at least. These sounds, the voices of gods, voice of lights, voice for lights. If I speak for the lights, then I must express their desires. If light is investiture and all investiture is deity and deity has intent, then light must have intent. You can tell this is like the crazed scientist who, you know, is drawing, you know, red strings across the, you know, it's like this leads here and this leads here. And they're having a brilliant moment, but it's slightly unhinged. Well, if you, yeah. if you just take this, this, especially the last part, voice for lights mm-hmm. and all that stuff, that mm-hmm. might as well be from the diagram itself, the way it's written. Mm. Well, and this is also something that Brandon has talked about um, in his magic systems. In in the Cosmere magic systems, intent matters. You know, you could stumble across something that you need to do to, you know, do something within one of these magic systems, and it won't do anything unless you mean to. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just wave your hands in this way and something happens. It's wave your hands in this way and have a, the intent in your mind. And something happens. Yeah. Well, you, especially on this planet, you can see some obvious ones in that people, anyone can say the words. You mm-hmm. got to mean them. Yep. Otherwise, they're not accepted. They well, don't get anything. And creating um, creating stormlight or creating anti-stormlight, it's the same tone as creating stormlight. But you had to mentally invert them. 
and then suddenly it sounds became... sounds exactly the same. We have no it way seems... of hearing right. the phase shift. The way sound, sound waves work, they have the exact same tone. But if you overlap them, they completely cancel each other out. And so you can actually have a sound playing and then you play its inverse and you hear silence. It's, it was one of my favorite things when I took my, uh, my acoustics class. Yeah. Well, it and it's just, impressive it was, it's to so hear cool. silence when she's all the way over on Threnody. <laughs> I don't care what you think. That was I, I'm proud of that one. We're going to take another self-satisfied <sighs> sip here. Just Go to your room. Uh, we have problems, Bill. And speaking of, um, you know, it continues on the end notes. Intent matters. Intent is king. You cannot do what I attempt by accident. You must mean it. This seems a much greater law than we've ever before understood. So Brandon has talked about intent matters in these magic systems a lot. They're figuring it out in world. And that's when you're like, okay, this is where it gets interesting because suddenly you have actual scholars looking at the magic system and picking it apart. This is where Brandon magic is science and science is fascinating. And I use Mm -hmm. that word way too much, but it really is. (laughs) Well, and it's especially important in the, as far as the, it's a much greater law than we've ever before understood. This has come up before. Think of Nightblood's command, destroy mm-hmm. evil. He, mm-hmm. he, he understands the intent behind that, but he doesn't have the, the concept behind it. And so he's, he's almost a being of pure intent without the, mm-hmm. the knowledge that tempers it. Even and the then, shards work the yeah, same way. Because c- over time... Yeah. The shard overrides the the intent of the personality, wielder. and then yeah, the going a step, the yeah, going a step beyond that in Dawn Shard, you know, when the, there is an intent behind each of the Dawn Shards, mm-hmm. and so it's just intent matters. It it's it's a really interesting theme to to delve into to this degree. Well, and it's especially interesting given. You know, a few uh, headings before where we have Raboniel saying proof of the truth of my intent, even if the project was ultimately doomed. And so mm-hmm. Raboniel's intent also mattered, but on a much more personal level than a, than a magical one. And yeah. in the end, the intent was to make something beautiful. And they did. Because intent matters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This wouldn't. This wouldn't. The the as cool as what Julio discovered is. It's not as impressive because he didn't mean to create an he entirely new piece. Of, he stumbled upon it, and then once he act, you know, once they started experimenting with it, they realized, oh my goodness, this is so much more. This was they intended to make something, and they mm-hmm. did. And it is mm-hmm. it, it, it is a work of art as much as it is a work of science. Yeah, this was yeah. a quest more than just a discovery. Yeah, um, yeah you, 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 you hear this in a few other magic systems. The one that immediately comes to my mind is if you've ever read anything by David Eddings, um, there's a magic system they call the will and the word, where first you picture what you want to happen and you gather the strength behind it, and then you speak the word and it comes to be. But the, but the word has to be powered by the will. And it's the same, mm. just, you know, you have to have the intent. You have to have the desire to make it happen. Well, and you think of, uh, you go to, to the, the system of breaths and you can know the commands, but you got to have one, enough power or enough breaths. But you can, by having the correct intent and thinking mm-hmm. of the correct command you can make it so much more efficient. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We will come back for final thoughts in a minute, but in the meantime, we love hearing from our listeners. So please keep sending in questions, ask us about the Cosmere, drop us your ideas for topics you'd like us to discuss during the show. And while you're at it, we'd love to hear feedback about how you think we're doing as well as any interesting theories you might have about what's going on in the Cosmere. 
You can send all questions and suggestions in a brief, concise email to CosmereStudies at gmail.com, and we could read that as part of the show. If you prefer to send us a physical letter, we do have a P.O. Box at the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, P.O. Box 970063, or a Utah 84097. We also have our own personal projects that we work on outside the show and just, you know, that they, they keeps us going, that keeps us inspired. So, Amy, why don't you start us off and tell us where we can find you outside of this show? So my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp because my name is too long. My Instagram is at Coincidence underscore Cosplay. And I have two websites that basically do the same thing. Um, <laughs> www.coincidencecosplay.com and my Etsy shop is etsy.com slash shop slash Coincidence Cosplay. Though I'm wondering if I'm going to stop doing my Etsy shop. But we're, we'll that's a whole other thing. So, um, and my husband's website is deckplan.io. So that's for Magic the Gathering deck building. Um, so I haven't been doing as much because I have tendonitis. That's what it is that's going mm. on with my arm. So that's cool. I've got physical therapy lined up for July, I think is when it is. So mm. hopefully that'll start getting better. Um, and I'm going to probably be making some more dice and I'm going to start making... Or at least I'm not, I don't know. I guess I can put pictures up about it, but I'm not really going to start selling them to other people. But um, I'm making giant cubes, basically, for kids in therapy. Hmm. So like, cubes? No, more like there's, there's someone, um, I'm in contact with a child therapist, and she has a client who hits their head all the time on stuff, and so she wants a cube hmm. so they can hit the cube instead of, the wall or interesting or whatever else and there was there was another little kid that i made one for that was they were having some serious anger issues for very valid reasons and so they can beat up the cube interesting instead so that's i i haven't been doing very much on my social media but i i plan to do more stuff as time goes on so more dice more sewing hopefully cool. less wrist pain all right so. jordan how about you where can we find your stuff uh, you can always find me on twitch.tv slash uh, splice stream. Uh, we just got done with our E3 coverage and I made a bold prediction. I called and I have a video <laughs> that proves it that Advance oh, Wars was coming back. And I'm going to say, I'm shouting this from every rooftop I get onto. I know. I, I called that Advance Wars was coming back. And the best part was I did a show uh, the night before E3 where we made predictions and it, then everyone had to predict what uh what prediction was wrong of someone else's and some and you had to put something on the line and someone one one of the people on the panel picked that and so they had to suffer some consequences it, it's just it's delicious and most importantly <laughs> but most importantly of all we got a release date for psychonauts too so if you have wa are a fan of the psychonauts series and excited for psychonauts too you should leave a five-star review and but just talk about Psychonauts this week. That's that's really what I want. Most important is that we got a, a date for Metroid Dread. Yes. Oh, what the, is the, the date for that one? It's it was October. October I uh, want to say it was October eighth. I want to guess. Okay, I'll have to tell Josh that because he's he's excited for that. The, the funny for those who don't know, uh, there's been this rumored uh, Metroid Dread project going on for near fifteen years, and when they finally dropped the title. Those of us who have been hearing those rumors for decades were like, it's real? <laughs> it's it's happening. It's happening. Yep. All right. Um, and as for myself, I have another podcast with my friend Dylan. We talk about board games, and it's just a lot of fun. It's called The Innkeeper's Table, and we have new episodes on Friday mornings. We really talk about a lot of different things. Our most recent episode was a game spotlight on a new game called canvas that came out. It's really cool because it's got like these transparent cards and you lay them over the top of each other and it creates pictures. And based on which pictures you have in which order, um, you can earn tokens that are worth points at the end of the game. It's really a cool concept. Um, and then the next episode, we talk about math trades, which are essentially the ultimate trading quest from a, from video games. A math trade is where, Let's say Jordan has a game that Amy wants. Amy has a game that I want, and I have a game that Jordan wants. Well, rather than swap between me and Amy, and then Amy swap, what happens is we I give my game to Jordan, Jordan gives his game to Amy, Amy gives her game to me. 
Mm. Well, a math trade takes that, but you can have add in have like hundreds and hundreds of people. That's and right. Then you it told me through. about this. Yeah, it looks through, and and each of the people put out a wish list based on what games are in there, and then the computer looks through and makes the most trades possible happen. Hmm. And so we go into a lot more detail on this, but it's a really really cool concept that is incredibly nerdy to talk about, but so much fun. <laughs> Isn't it mostly done at like conventions and stuff? Uh, it happens at conventions. People ship it to each other, all sorts of stuff. If you want to know more about it, there's a great episode of this podcast coming out at the end of the week. You should really check it out. It's called The Innkeeper's Table. Man, but um, where would I find that podcast and on what day? <laughs> like I said, it comes out Friday mornings. Um, I've also got several board game reviews over on www.innkeeperstable.com. And I post about games on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at, at Innkeeper's Table. Actually, at Innkeeper's Table podcast is likely to be more active of late. And uh, we've also got an announcement that we'll be putting out in the next month or so. So keep an eye on that. That's pretty cool. Um, Can't confirm. For those of you, it is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who want to support the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, but you can't become patrons, head on over to... Uh, well, we would love it if you just let your friends know about the show and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere studies. And if you want to toss us a good review, wherever you listen to us, that'd be great as well. All right, guys, final thoughts on this before we close out. I hadn't really considered too much about Raboniel potentially having a, a deeper relationship with L than mm -hmm. just passing. They're both fused type of thing. But she did mention that he would be interested in the fact that Stormlight or Void Light or these different lights War, can invoke Vorlight. emotional. Yeah. But it can invoke an emotional reaction. Mm. And so it makes me wonder how how much have they collaborated in the past? <laughs> and I now really want it to be that they collaborated a lot because as interesting as L is already, tying him to Raboniel, who so far has been the most interesting of the fused. I think that would really mm -hmm. add some some spice in book five <laughs> when we get also that, the fact know. that also the fact that he's been stripped of his title, but she's still rever referring to, you know, I want to share this with him. I want to let him know about this. It's mm -hmm. like, OK, that's interesting because most people, I, they don't speak of them anymore. I wonder if she took she got out of being one of the nine after he was disgraced. Ooh, that would add. Some. I wonder if I wonder if there's a connection there that she's like we had to. You know, everybody else agreed to disgrace him, and I don't want to be part of this anymore. Aluminum foil hat theory. Woo! He's the what? father of the child. What? <laughs> That's, oh my goodness, that gets weird. Okay, we'll see. No, no idea. Anyway, um, yeah. any other final thoughts? I, th I think that's a really. I, I, I want to learn more about L. Yeah, it's it's craziness. Yeah. And I just, I think Raboniel is such a good character. She is seriously one of the best hmm. characters. I wonder if we'll get more insight into her when we get like Towns or Ashes flashbacks. Good. That would be interesting. Yeah. Anyway, special thanks to our patron producer, Mims Laundry Service, removing evidence one filthy little stain at a time. In addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks, on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts. Just do a search for Cosmere Studies. It should come up. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. And if you find any questions, feedback, or suggestions for the show, email them to CosmereStudies at gmail.com. For our next episode, we are doing some comparisons between Brandon's works. Specifically, we're going to take a closer look at the similarities and differences between two of our favorite street urchins, Vin and Lyft. So make sure to be here for the live recording on July 5th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. Until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's, there's always, always another secret. Another secret.